So I'm sure you've all heard the term appoggio or breath support before, and you may think you know what it means, but do you know what it feels like in your body? Do you know what it sounds like in your voice? And do you know how to find and activate your own appoggio? And if you think you know, I encourage you to keep watching this video. Voice with Julia, change your voice, change your life. As I've said in a few of my previous videos, breath support can be defined as the mechanism by which we hold air off of the vocal cords. It is not sending air to the vocal cords. Why? It's because we don't need actually any muscular activity to get the air out of our body. In fact, run up a flight of stairs and the first thing you do at the top of the stairs is <sighs> you pant because the exhalation process for our body is very natural. What's not natural is controlling that exhalation process. And that is where breath support comes in. So breath support is holding air intentionally off the voice and sending it out through the vocal cords in very measured intervals. Now, that sounds easy, but a couple things come into play. Because first of all, you need the vocal folds, AKA the valve of the voice to be calibrated for lack of a better word correctly so that the sound will be right. And then once the vocal cords are calibrated correctly, the pressure within the lung system will be dictated by the thickness or the thinness of the vocal fold. And then it is our responsibility as singers to be able to maintain that without thickening or thinning the fold unintentionally. So we have to be able to sustain a certain kind of breath pressure throughout a line underneath our cords. Now, when I use this term breath pressure, this doesn't mean pressure. It means simply the amount of pressure that builds up beneath the cord and that pressure can be very minimal or it can be very large. And so what we need to do as singers is find that optimal pressure system and then be able to sustain that as we sing a line. And this is a lot easier said than done. If you think about the diaphragm, the diaphragm sits about here in our bodies, okay? And when we breathe in, the diaphragm descends. And when we exhale, it ascends again. So our lungs, when they expand, really we allow all of that space to kind of happen when the diaphragm descends, the rib cage expands, intercostal muscles are at work, okay? And then when we sing or exhale, this is what would happen if we had no control. But what we wanna do is we wanna maintain that control. So I'm gonna put my hands up here so I'm not out of the video, but we need to be able to do this very slowly. And that requires oppositional forces. I'm sure many of you have played tug of war when you were a kid. Now tug of war, you have two sides and they've each got teams, right? And they're pulling a rope to see who's going to win, okay? So you've got one side going this way, one side going that way. Now breath support is much the same way because if we didn't have any resistance on the exhalation or the sun line, we would retreat from this position, which is the diaphragm descended and contracted. We would retreat like this immediately without any resistance. Now, the vocal cords provide natural resistance. So just by the act of singing, you're gonna slow down the exhalation process. However, that implies what we, what we need that cord to do is we need it to be thinner, especially for classical vocal production, we need that cord to be thinner. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that we don't have too much breath pressure pushing up under the cord. Why is that? Because if we have too much breath pressure pushing up under the cord, the cord thickens, 
in accordance to keep that breath at bay instead of pushing out and creating a breathy sound like <sighs> Now you will get some beginners that instead of squeezing the cord and thickening the cord, you will get some that actually do turn breathier when there's too much subglottic pressure. So keep that in check because two of those things could be happening. But the majority of singers who have been singing for a long time and or are professionals, you will get that kind of like over, uh, over thickened chord sound, which only if you've experienced it in your own ears and listening to it over and over again, will you be able to identify. Because a lot of people call that good singing nowadays, but it's very important that you start to be able to hear what that thick chord function sounds like. It is a very different sound from thin chord function. We have to address this a little bit in terms of breath support because it does create difference in the pressure relationship in our lungs. So going back to oppositional forces, we've got these two sides of the tug of war, okay? We have the diaphragm that can remain contracted, but then we get no airflow up into the cords. We can't have that, obviously. But we can't release the diaphragm too much and then have the air push up and try to like create too much uh, push on the vocal folds so that they squeeze. So we don't want that. Both of those situations are no good. So what we need to do, essentially, this is our strategy. This is our game plan. We need to be able to maintain a very like calibrated degradation of the diaphragmatic contraction as we sing the vocal line. And what this means, let me put that into plain language for you. We need to be able to relax the diaphragm very incrementally as we sing. Now we do that by controlling the airflow with other muscles in our lower abdominal muscles, some of our transverse, um, our obliques, there's various muscle groups that are really responsible for that and our lower rectus abdominis, not the upper part of the rectus abdominis, but the lower part. So let's put this into practical application. And I'm sure you've all been walked through some sort of exercise like this where you breathe in, you feel that expansion, then you hold your breath. Now you're gonna very slowly hiss out. Now that hiss, if you can maintain that very slowly, and stretch that out as long as possible. That is actually the definition definition of breath support, okay? So you're feeling that, and you'll notice that it's actually a very light feeling. You're not grabbing in your abdominals, you're not pushing in, you're not pushing out. It's almost like everything is frozen in time. It's frozen in time and it is not wanting to have any pressure put on it in either direction. And this is when you know you're in that sweet spot of breath support. Okay, now when we put a sung sound on this, most people can get this hiss, no problem. And they're like, yes, I've got it. But the problem comes when we add phonation. Because as soon as we change what's happening at the valve, we're gonna change that pressure relationship. Thus, changing the way we decrease the contraction of the diaphragm. And this is really important. So we have to make sure that we're really set up on that thin fold as we start to phonate in order for our support to be optimized. I talk a lot about head voice and light mechanism registration. And here it is especially important that you know how to find that because practicing your support is most efficient when you do this on the thinnest fold function that you have, meaning the softest and the lightest registration that you have. So practicing your appoggio on something like a uh, chest tone, like ah, is not really gonna train what you have to do with your body. Instead, if you can start to recalibrate that system, so it feels like you're only articulating that top half of the vocal fold, 
and you're really maintaining that light mechanism, you'll feel it a lot more in your body. So we're going to do an exercise together. We're gonna to breathe in for 10 seconds. Then we're gonna suspend our rib cage. Then we're going to very, very softly onset onto a hum. Make sure the tongue is up on the palate when humming. And you're going to sing the softest, the tiniest sound that you can without pulling anything in the throat. So you wanna make sure that that is really relaxed. When this is correct, you should all be in, everybody should be in head voice dominance in this exercise. So if you're a lower voice type, you wanna bring up this feeling into the falsetto region so that you can access this. And you're going to feel the sound somewhere behind the nose to, depending on what note you're gonna pick, somewhere behind the nose to around this area, okay? So let's practice this. We're gonna breathe in. Bend. Now, you're gonna feel that contraction. What you're going to wanna do at this moment is bring the cord together because you feel all that pressure and just let yourself go. Just release that feeling of expansion. But what you need to do is mind over matter here, okay? Don't just let the body collapse. You need to be thinking, okay, what is my strategy? The strategy is do not let that air push out onto the cord. And when you do that, you're gonna feel a very different sensation. So let me just repeat that. Um, you can go with me or I'm just gonna kind of play catch up here. Now, when I do these really light onsets in the middle voice, what I first notice, not allowing myself to push from the throat or make any kind of big sound, I first notice that the pressure inside my body really increases. And I can feel like the air wants to just come rushing out, but I don't let it and I control it very methodically. So in essence, when you practice something like this, you need to make sure that you are very soft and that you are really in that light mechanism because that is going to hook you up to your apoggio much better. So as you sustain the line, I want you to imagine that the diaphragm stays contracted. And now remember, contraction happens on the inhalation, not the exhalation. So you sing on the feeling of inhalation. And this is what the old masters meant when they're talking about that. You maintain that diaphragmatic contraction and only release it very slowly across the singing line. Maintaining that contraction though, because if you don't maintain the contraction, it just does this, remember, and the air rushes out. So you're going to maintain that contraction throughout the vocal line. Now you're not going to add contraction, you're not gonna push down, and you're not going to push in, okay? You're going to suspend yourself in the time-space continuum and allow that sound to flow from that small point. It should not be loud, and if you haven't accessed this feeling before, you'll probably only be able to hold this for maybe three seconds. And that is okay because as the body has to adjust to these new pressure situations and kind of get acclimated with that. So try it a few times, feel what the body wants to do. And then when you feel that point where the body wants to just give up and relax and push out, that's where you need to stay really strong mentally and say, no, I'm going to insist upon this feeling, upon this feeling of contraction and buoyancy at the same time. Contraction and buoyancy. And when you do that, that is the element that makes the voice soar. That's the element when you hear voices that are so free, sailing over the orchestra, this is that element. But this plays in to your whole vocal technique. So I don't put this necessarily first, but equal in all other areas of your vocal technique, this needs to be equal. So attention is given here, 
but in order to optimize the appoggio, you also have to optimize the other elements of the vocal system. So we will talk about that more in further videos. Are you enjoying this video? If so, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be the first to know whenever I release a new video about vocal technique. I have interviews, I have singing demonstrations, I have vocal exercises, all of that is going to be here on my YouTube channel. So if you like more of this content, please subscribe today.